So I think uh, the screen is visible, isn't it, sir? The presentation. Hello, sir. Hello, sir. Screen, Kana, Kana, sir. Okay. Okay. Fine. Fine. Okay. So thank you. Okay. So this problem uh, is actually supervised learning, where uh, generally we call it as a classification, where. Uh, we have say uh, two minima. Say there are there are many types of classification. Say maybe the simplest one is called a binary classification, where we have uh, two classes of say data or two types of data. So for example, in uh, nowadays it's very uh, common that we have a COVID-19 positive and COVID-19 negative. Okay, so patients uh, two two categories, uh, or you can say that. Uh, uh, say maybe um, male and female or say plus case and minus case uh, or you can say maybe cancerous non-cancerous uh, okay all these are actually so two categories of problems uh, okay so uh, so that's called a binary classification problem okay so you the input into this particular uh, say methods whether it's an artificial neural network or a, a support vector machine is actually a set of data okay especially it's called a labeled data okay so which we call generally as a training data okay because uh, there you know the labels of each data that means in which category okay that is plus category or minus category a particular data point belongs to then before going to uh, maybe uh, so for example we will come to this slide later so just uh, in order to see uh, maybe how a data will look like you yeah? So you can see that there are uh, say two categories of data. This is red points and uh, maybe this uh, uh, say dark points. So here this uh, data is actually embedded in a uh, two dimension space only. But generally uh, our data will be of uh, d dimension or you can say n dimensional data. Okay, that means uh, one data point is actually described by n dimension. Okay, of uh, say data. So that is generally we can represent as a vector. Okay. And uh, so here we have only x1 and x2, so it's a two dimensional data for simple uh, and maybe understanding and visualization. Uh, this particular uh, uh, say uh, figure will be easy, so that's why it's a simple representation, anyway. So, here we can say that, uh, that two, there are two categories, so two classes uh, one is red points and another one is a uh, black points, okay. So, our problem is actually uh, so the, the, this the given data is called as a training set of data, and suppose. Uh, uh, so the ultimate aim of a classification problem is a prediction. So that means, um, for example, suppose uh, a fifth data is given. So here we have say four data points. Um, then suppose we have a fifth data point is given. Okay, so we don't know whether that is a red point or a black point. Suppose using this data, uh, we using these four data points. Suppose we develop a model, okay, prediction model. Uh, which will be able to predict uh, the new point that's the fifth point uh, into either uh, red category or to say uh, black category okay so the two classes okay uh, correctly so then we will see that uh, we have developed uh, a model which can predict uh, the correct label okay, or the color in this case of say this uh, data okay using the tra the training set data that uh, is already given so it's called a labeled data but th th there is another problem called the clustering problem or which is called an unsupervised problem where the label is actually not one okay so you are given a set of data but you have to look into the characteristics of the data okay and you have to find out some uh, special features or combinations of features or categories sorry features uh, that will help you to group the data into say say three classes suppose say one group one group two group three so you can see that in uh, that is called a like clustering problem but here we are interested only in this classification problem okay fine uh, so now uh, if you consider uh, this okay the, uh, maybe okay we have one more data uh, uh, set is called a test data so that's what the fifth data that we were discussing about them so this four are actually training data and the fifth one or the maybe sixth one or maybe another hundred as a uh, uh, data that is available to be tested with our model is actually the uh, but a test data okay then one more data is uh, data set generally comes it's called a validation set data but we are not going to the details right now we'll discuss that later okay fine so you are given training set data okay you have to develop a model fine 
Now there can be generally there are two classes of uh, say the uh, there are two ways in which uh, uh, this uh, data okay the training set data can actually fall into an n dimension space. So one is actually called a linearly separable data. So linearly separable data. That means uh, one class of uh, objects are actually grouped into or say fall into a region of the uh, n-dimensional space, uh, and the other category is actually falls into another one. So in this diagram, you can see that uh, the, the the red points are actually falls into this particular region, and uh, the dark points actually falls in this particular region. So here, uh, maybe as this is a two-dimensional space, uh, you can say that you can uh, draw a straight line. Okay. So that straight line clearly separates okay the two classes of the uh, say data. So that is a, a linearly separable one. Okay. So we'll come to the point of why it is called a linearly separable okay later in detail. But there are problems uh, where, say for example, the uh, black and the red points mixed up. Okay. So that means uh, nobody in this world can say draw a straight line. Okay, in the given space, okay, uh, where uh, a clear uh, say separation is actually possible. So in such cases, uh, we need uh, the non-linear uh, what uh, curves or say decision boundaries we call it, okay non-linear because a straight line will not help us to uh, but, uh, find out the model which can easily say that uh, okay uh, one part of the you can see that uh, if you look into this particular uh, the region okay all the region comes here you can say that belongs to maybe the black uh, points and all the regions uh, towards this particular region say belongs to uh, red you can see so one one side and another one side okay fine so generally why the term linear here actually comes to okay so we will call the, the line in this case or the uh, an, a non-linear uh, uh, curve that actually fits into the non-linear case we generally call it as a uh, decision boundary okay so that's a decision boundary and uh, so now we'll come to uh, the simplest case it's a q2 category problem because this can be extended to uh, the other multiple categories okay so we'll, we, we don't have a much time to discuss all these issues but we'll see whatever uh, possible uh, the things that we can actually cover. So now we'll come to a two category problem. Okay, so here the uh, the, the idea is actually we have to find out some linear discriminant functions. That means you are discriminating the categories, two categories using some linear functions. Okay, just uh, that's why the terminology linear discriminants. Okay, so a linear discriminant is nothing but a decision boundary. Okay. Decision boundary, and generally, uh, this can be represented maybe using this particular form. Okay, so, so for example, you if you look into a different textbooks or different resources over internet, they, they will be using their own labels, terminologies, and all those things. So, but generally, uh, if you know okay, one notation and they maybe say the concept, then you can easily pick up with the, the other materials also. Fine. So, here, g of x. Okay, this is actually the equation for the linear discriminant, which is W transpose. Okay, so W is a vector, okay, and transpose of that vector into X vector, okay, and plus W is zero. So here, uh, W is a weight vector, okay, and X is an input vector. That means uh, we already started, uh, we know that there is an n dimensional data vector, okay. Uh, for us that means in our case it's a two-dimensional vector you can say that uh, you'll have uh, two components okay so you'll have uh, say two components uh, maybe uh, x1 okay and uh, say x2 so that th there will be in our case okay but there can be x1 x2 x3 up to xn or uh, that's a column vector or a vector so you can see that uh, we have two term one is actually weight vector which is w and uh, you have an input vector data vector say that is x and w0 generally uh, in machine learning terminology we call it as a bias okay but that can be combined with the, the weight vector in some uh, analysis uh, but uh, uh, easiness in analysis we yeah, in core, we consider that a bias also as a part of the weight vector so that means this this uh, this uh, matrix notation can be expanded to your component form that is w i is equal to one to d assume that's a d-dimensional data given w into x a plus w zero so that is actually the equation for the uh, the linear discriminant function g of x so that means uh, in, in our case uh, the linear discriminant function is going to be a straight line but in another case it is going to be a curve so maybe a, a, a parabola okay or maybe some polynomial function okay also maybe a hyperbola there, there any 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 possibilities are there okay 
So now, uh, how we can actually use this equation for a linear discriminant function? Okay. Uh, so uh, keep in mind that the x can be uh, the data point from any problem that you are actually working with. Okay. So whether that is from uh, from a medical field, uh, you'll have an, a maybe a table. Okay. So each of the table will have each of the columns. So each of the columns you can consider that as a uh, the the components. That means the dimensions. And if you are working from a, as a uh, management side, then you will have the, your own data which is arranged in a say, tabular form. Then you will have each column representing your uh, the components of the data vector. So if you are coming from an academic field, you can have your own Mars data, some other, other data vector. So that means whichever field you are actually working, your data may be able to be represented as a vector as a x. So keep in mind that this is a general uh, 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 equation which can be applied to any data okay so now how we will use this uh, linear discriminant function is actually okay so uh, we have a g of x okay assume that there are two categories because we are discussing in the two category problem and let us take them the labels of the classes as w1 and say w2 in this case in some textbooks you will see c1 and c2 okay any 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 names so we can say that uh, if g of x is greater than zero okay that means it's a positive value then uh, you can say that the x is a uh, what, uh, the x label is actually uh, w1 Okay. And if g of x less than zero, then we can see that uh, the x current x, uh, which is, whichever is given, it may be a test data, and the label is actually w2. That means a uh, other class. And now there is a uh, condition left that is g of x equal to zero. So we know that uh, a point, uh, whenever a point actually lies on a particular equation or a uh, curve or surface, whatever is, uh, in that case, you will have g of x equal to zero. So that means uh, you cannot say whether it is corresponding to W1 or W2. Okay, so it's better to take, consider that as an undetermined okay, or whatever uh, way you are actually handling the situation. Okay. So that is a, uh, is a very, very, very basic thing. So I think you can uh, easily follow this equation. And now, uh, generally, uh, we have the decision boundary and in machine learning terminology, sometimes it's called a hyperplane. Okay, so that we are not going to the details of uh, maybe the terminology, so, but you can see that the decision boundary is sometimes called a hyperplane. So, now, we, here we have two terms. I think uh, all of us studied the equation for a line in our school classes, say y is equal to mx plus c, okay, where we call m as the slope and c is a y intercept. That means uh, uh, slope is maybe slope determines the orientation, okay, in which direction that your line is actually uh, falling okay or lying in the uh, the embedding space so, okay and uh, c is actually the y intercept maybe from how much distant from the origin that your line actually cuts the axis so here also we have a w and w0 i think w is a weight vector and w0 is a bias so you can see that a g of x equal w transpose x into sorry plus w0 so we here also uh, the w parameter that's a weight uh, vector parameter actually determines uh, the orientation of the hyperplane something like a slope okay and uh, its location from the origin is actually determined by w0 so it's very important what is the role of or the influence of w on this uh, decision boundary by for w and for w0 okay and we know that when y intercept is in c is equal to zero we know that it passes through origin similarly w0 equal to zero it passes through the origin okay so a lot of mathematical analysis you can actually do and uh, interpret them okay and now what is a learning process so for example yeah, that is an artificial neural network or an svm or some other techniques like a decision trees random forest okay there are many uh maybe uh learning algorithms are actually the classification algorithms are there but uh, we have to estimate w1 w0 for this uh, what, uh decision boundary okay so and we have to find out the value of the vector w assume that it contains a w D components in our case the W1, W2, W3, etc. up to WD uh, and the bias which is essentially W0. So we have to find out uh, these values uh, from the training set that is given. So for example in this case uh, from the four uh, data points we have to find out the uh, W vector and W0. Now we can see, we can see that if you look into this particular diagram, uh, here you have we have a uh, straight line that is shown. But we know that uh, you can have a uh, what, uh, 
there are many uh, other lines you can actually maybe draw. So this is one uh, another line that you can draw. This is another line you can draw. Okay. So there are many 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 possibilities. Are. So now the question is, uh, which line is actually the best one? Okay. So it's a question. And uh, our ultimate goal is actually we have to find out uh, the vector w and the uh, w zero term uh, for a line uh, which will have uh, maybe the best uh, what, uh, uh, what we are looking for uh, you can see so what will be their ultimate aim is actually uh, which line will give the least error okay the least error when you test with a tested uh, say uh, data set okay so that sometimes we call it as a generalization error because these are the four points that are actually specific points that are given but uh, our ultimate aim is we have to find out a line so that line will generalize even the points that can come in future okay uh, so that uh, error in classification is minimized so that is the idea behind a training process and now we'll come to uh, okay, this is actually the the basics of uh, maybe uh, uh, artificial neural networks also so that's why we uh, discuss in this particular point of view you don't need to bother about or don't disturb the equations okay we are not going to the uh, mathematical analysis but the basic equations and maybe its concepts okay we have, we should understand so that we can easily go to the mathematics behind it if you wish okay the later stage okay so now our aim is actually we have to minimize the error okay so that's a solution can be found out by minimizing an error function so that's a very important okay so assume that uh, we have a uh, uh, say the here you can see that a uh, true class level okay here we have true class level and uh, assume that you have a predicted class level okay so what is true class level so for example um, assume that we have we have 20 data points uh, okay new data points that is uh, uh, considered as a test data set okay and uh, keep in mind that uh, we know exactly the assume that uh, the, the, those data points uh, we clearly know the class levels uh, true class levels we know but we are just hiding that from the algorithm okay and we are just giving only the uh, the, I mean, the dimension values or sometimes called attribute values okay we are not showing the class level we are not using the class level while training okay or maybe while testing so now we will tell your model to predict what is a uh, uh, predicted by class level and what is a true class level which we have hid it. So you can compare that. So that is actually ZK and maybe ZK cap. Okay, these two are the uh, true class level and the predicted class level. So now a difference okay of say zero means they are same. If they are same means the difference is zero. That means error is zero. That means uh, if the zero is a class level and uh, true class level and the predicted class level is also zero, then it's fine. There is no error. Your model is perfect. Okay. And suppose if one is a true class level and your model predicts us zero, okay, then there is a uh, an error of say one. Okay, so like that. Okay, so we can see that is a k minus is at k cap okay the whole square so that is generally the error function is used in the squared error okay set k minus is at k cap the whole square okay and we define this term that is this is the error function okay so it's an error function so keep, keep in mind that uh, this error value that you are calculating for uh one w that is a weight vector and for one bias Okay. because when you change the w and w0 in the previous diagram okay in the previous diagram you may get a another uh, what a straight line uh, if you change w and w0 again you will get a maybe another uh, what a straight line or a decision boundary or hyperplane whatever we call it. so each of these lines uh, will have a different total error okay so so that means uh, when you have a one W and W three, you'll have the error. The total error will be varying. Okay. So and we have to find out uh, which W and W zero, uh, which will give you the uh, the lowest error or the minimum error. So it's a minimization problem actually. Okay. I think that's a uh, clear. So now we have to use the learning algorithms to find the solution. So we have to use a learning algorithms okay, to find the solution. Okay. So that is also okay. Uh, keep easy to understand. Eh? Now assume that uh, okay, this is uh, uh, these slides are actually I have taken from uh, internet only. I think this is uh, uh, with respect to the textbook pattern classification by Duda. Okay, so 
so you can also get the same presentation okay so they have used uh, maybe a different terminologies uh, labels are fine so assume that we are having a linear discrete function okay g of x is equal to suppose we consider uh, uh instead of w that is they have used uh, maybe alpha in this particular uh slide so that means uh, w transpose into uh say a plus x but it's now it's y okay or oh, more or less or say and why there is a alpha zero is actually missing the uh, in our uh, previous slides we have w0 so you can see that uh, you uh, you consider w0 into say x0 okay in the previous case where x0 we always take as one okay so we will have a uh, w transpose x plus w0 into x0 okay? and x0 will take it as a one so that uh, you can combine that also into the the, the transpose uh, matrix is uh, a multiplication uh, term so that you can have uh, maybe in this case uh, alpha transpose into y okay? so in our previous case uh, w transpose into x that's all there is no plus w0 or there is no plus alpha 0 in this simulator okay so our goal is actually to learn the parameters in this case the weights alpha okay from a set of n level points for a where b e h s uh, y is actually a class level of w1 or w2 fine okay so now the solution vector alpha is, need not be unique because uh, that is you can have uh, many many uh, what the possible combinations of weights okay so that you will get many what are different lines but uh, what we had to find out the unit length vector okay alpha that maximizes our now minimum distance in the training examples the separating plane so you can see that eh, even so the the the, the uh, so for example uh, what is actually the distance from maybe this red point okay to the separating hyperplane okay and maybe this uh, point to the separating okay plane so here uh, our ultimate goal is actually we have to find out a decision uh, decision boundary maybe maximum from maybe green points and maximum from the red points Okay, so if you consider the green points, okay, maybe uh, a line drawing here will be best because you can accommodate a lot of points, uh, green points that may fall maybe in this region. But when you consider red points, uh, maybe a line drawn here may be better than what we have actually say uh, right now shown. So because it allows a lot of space here so that uh, other uh, similar red points can also accommodate. But here we have to consider two categories so there is a compromise needed that means uh, you have to bring in uh, this line towards this direction and uh, this towards uh, this direction because uh, this the line that we are finding out the decision boundary should be maximum uh, distance from green points and maximum from uh, red points so that is maybe somewhere here where maybe uh, maybe in between okay maybe the closest points of the different kinds okay, so you can uh, assume like that so that's the idea Okay, so now um, we will see how uh, maybe how we can actually uh, learn okay w and okay the w vector okay so here uh, learning we there's a there are many strategies but one of the very easy strategy or the maybe the basic strategy is actually i try to optimize such a problem okay because we have to optimize the weight vector okay so which weight vector will give you the lowest one okay lowest error so it's a minimization error function j of alpha in, in the previous slides we have seen j of w okay so here j of alpha that's a classification with respect to w okay so that is the j alpha the same equation that we have seen and now we are going to minimize this j alpha okay we have to minimize this j alpha iteratively so assume that we have uh, we have to iteratively that means first iteration second iteration third iteration so let's take a k as a iteration number so you have uh, uh, and each time we know that uh, for each uh, for alpha vector okay you will get a straight line in this case it will be another decision by surface in another case okay so then you have to calculate what is the error okay whether the error is actually still decreasing okay if it is decreasing again you have to you can change the parameter and see whether the new alpha values or uh, weight values actually still reduces the total error okay so like that too. so that's why what is the uh, weight vector at the k plus one iteration okay it is actually the previous weight values that is alpha values or w values at the kth iteration plus a particular term okay this particular term okay so that's the way in which we will update the weight values on each of the iterations okay so it's an iterative process okay. so here 
there are two terms one is called uh, eta of k and pk you can see that eta of k is actually a parameter at the kth iteration okay and pk is actually uh, but uh, a parameter again what that what we will see what is pk at the for the kth iteration so using the values of the kth iteration we find the uh, weight vector for the k plus one iteration so that is actually this particular process so here also you have a diagram so that means alpha of k suppose this particular point there and the alpha of k plus one that means this particular point okay and maybe j of alpha that the error whether so the error is actually decreasing in this way then which uh what uh, w value is actually so you can see that they, they around this x direction and y direction you are having alpha values and maybe along this uh, third dimension is a direction you have this j of alpha which is plotted in this particular diagram okay so then what is actually p k and eta of k eta of k is sometimes called learning rate okay your step size or say search step and uh, pk is actually the search direction in which direction we have to move so you can see that uh, so in this particular uh, plot has got a minimum point I mean, somewhere here okay that's the case and then if you're starting some uh, if you're because now there's a question how you will start with uh, the initial values of weight vector okay that's a very easy process because you just randomly assign Okay, you, you will be starting sometimes from this point, uh, sometimes you'll be starting from this point, sometimes you'll be starting from this point, uh, sometimes you'll be starting from, you can start from here, any of these points, there are many points. But the only thing, we uh, randomly uh, initialize the weight vector and then we uh, follow the iterative optimization procedure and uh, our ultimate goal is actually uh, maybe from here you have to reach towards this direction the lowest possible that is point wherever you start uh, your ultimate aim is actually to reach uh, somewhere uh, towards uh, uh, so that is sometimes uh, there are uh, terminologies called a local minimum and the global minimum Okay, so you can see here in this particular case, uh, uh, as it is, it's there's only one, one minimum point which is the global minimum because uh, the, the lowest among all the possible lowest, okay, was uh, lower points, maybe that's the uh, lowest points. Then, in which direction we are to move, whether we are to move maybe towards up direction in this direction or maybe somewhere in towards this direction. So, we know that you should go towards the downhill. Okay, it's a opposite of the hill climbing problem. Okay, so that you have to go to towards the you are just starting from a particular point and you are uh, uh, climbing downward direction. So it's a search direction. That's very important. Okay, now uh, how to choose the PK? Now, okay, so the PK is actually uh, chosen using a technique called the gradient descent algorithm. Okay, it's a very famous algorithm in uh, machine learning. So gradient descent algorithm is nothing better. You are taking a partial derivative of that particular error. Okay, so that means uh, on each uh, iteration, okay, on each iteration in this previous slide, uh, search the uh, at, uh, rate that usually we will fix as a very small value. But there are many. It's a very important. Okay, learning rate is very important parameter that we will discuss later. Okay, assume that usually that starts with a very small value. Okay. Uh, maybe a 0.5 or say 0.3, okay, something, something that can vary, okay. And uh, maybe the how to uh, what, uh, update the pk value is actually it is minus of that means a negative gradient, a negative direction we have to go because a hill climbing in the opposite direction. So, del represents that is uh, this del represents uh, your partial derivative of uh, what uh, the minimum error that we have calculated for the uh, what uh, k iteration. So that is a pk a parameter. So now we have a, uh, pk is defined and eta of k is defined. So learning rate and learning direction. Okay. So that here also it's a wrong. It is actually alpha. Okay. Keep in mind that it's alpha only. And this type of algorithm, okay, where uh, you are coming uh, going in the uh, negative direction by updating the uh, say uh, maybe the weight values is called the basic gradient descent algorithm. So here uh, it's an algorithm. Okay, again this is from the pattern classification textbook. Okay, uh, so your input is actually the um, the the weight vector maybe a here or, or alpha or w whatever say. And there's a criterion. Okay, maybe a some stopping condition. Then eta that means a learning rate and then maybe the iteration number k. So which starts with zero. And now we or each iteration we are actually updating this uh, weight vector. 
okay using the uh, equation that we were discussing and there uh, you should have uh, some condition when we are to stop uh, whether it, are you going for a uh, maybe thousand number of iterations is it the your stopping condition or you see that uh, uh, you are uh, this particular parameter that is eta k into p of k is actually less than some uh, what a criterion value okay some uh, theta value uh, so that uh, which is which we assume that there may be a lowest value which is sufficient enough to stop this uh, what, uh, iteration so that is actually the gradient descent algorithm and finally you have to return uh, the the weight vector a in this case or alpha what, w what all, all those represent the same thing so this is actually the idea behind a uh, gradient descent algorithm and this is the maybe the search space looks like this so for example suppose you start with an alpha value okay somewhere here and your aim is actually you have to reach somewhere here there's a solution point here okay this uh, uh empty circle so you can start from here 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 update 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 and come here okay so but uh, that uh, when you take the the learning rate the eta parameter that we were discussing even a very small change in the eta can actually take uh, the can result in a problem called an oscillation effort okay oscillation okay problem that means uh, suppose eta is equal to point three seven in one case okay you start from here and you'll come 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 reach here but uh, if it is a little more larger then you can start from here and it can result in some large oscillations but still it will reach Okay. that means are you taking a, a bigger uh, say strides okay or are you taking with really small steps so for example you are uh, just uh, coming downstairs uh, are you taking one step or are you or are you jumping to okay fourth step from the currently standing step uh, okay so which way you are actually uh, there can be advantages and disadvantages okay, sometimes it can be risky okay so that's the way you are actually updating this particular you know, at, uh, eta parameter and sometimes there's another algorithm called the batch gradient. So in the previous algorithm, you are taking one by one. That means uh, you take the training set data and uh, then you iteratively do the step. But there's another way uh, to update this, which is batch perceptron. That means you will not take uh, all the training samples, but uh, a group of them. Okay, maybe a wrongly classified uh, all of them together. You will find out this uh, what uh, the PK parameter. Okay, and then you will update the weight vector. Okay, earlier it was updated for each case, but here now it's updated for a group. So that's why it's got a batch. So we are not going to the details of such uh, listen. So that is actually our first session. Okay. Now uh, we will go to the um, artificial neural networks. So I think uh, the presentation is visible. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. 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 Thank you. Okay. So now we'll come to uh, artificial neural network. So I think uh, this uh, nowadays uh, uh, maybe the very uh, hot topic is artificial neural network AI. Okay. AI and uh, machine learning. AI is actually a very large okay uh, domain, and uh, machine learning is only a sub domain. Okay, it's a very small thing uh, domain that is coming under AI. But uh, the, maybe which is the earliest AI work? Okay, that has been. Uh, attempted by mathematicians or computer scientists, then the answer is actually artificial neural network. Okay, why? Because it actually deals with or say it actually uh, uh, maybe uh, the principles are actually taken from how the human brain actually works. So that's a very important. Thing. Okay, so the people actually were really fascinated by the human brain always now also. Okay. It's not tracked, okay, even a very small percentage, okay, but still uh, the research is going on how to, to simulate, to, to mathematically model how human brain actually really works, okay. So the mathematical models of the brain's activity are fine, and uh, we, you might have already studied that uh, all these living uh, organisms are made up of living cells, uh, even with the uh, say coronavirus, you have a okay. Uh, the, similarly, the human brain is actually made up of cell living cells called neurons. Okay, and uh, maybe uh, how uh, we know that uh, the electric electrochemical electrochemical activity is actually the one uh, that actually maybe uh, makes possible the working of uh, say. Uh, human brain okay and uh, these neurons okay are actually connected together to form neural networks okay. in brain it's a network okay so they are actually connected okay. connected in the sense that they exchange information 
okay some electrical information or say pulses whatever okay representation we engineers or whoever is actually um, mathematically representing this neurons one cell exchange data with the, or information with the other cells I maybe mean, through proteins enzymes hormones like that so here neurons are actually uh, they are also uh, connected to other neurons and exchange information okay fine so you can see that uh, this particular diagram is actually uh, what, uh, that of a um, so it is a, a diagram of a uh, what, uh, brain cell it's a neuron it has got a nucleus and other uh, associated structures we are not going to the details and you can see that uh, an axon okay and uh, this will go and uh, maybe make a connection with the uh, other uh, what uh, neurons of similar kind so okay fine so they are in such way in that way it is actually connected each other okay and uh, artificial neural network means uh, you are actually mathematically modeling uh, the neural network that is present in brain and see the mathematical model behaves like the uh, human brain so that was an uh, attempt uh, made by scientists and now uh, so this is actually maybe how a single neuron okay is mathematically modeled by maclock and pitts okay there the, maybe the first uh, mathematical modeling okay and maybe the very well accepted uh, model okay so each neuron actually fires that's a terminology okay when a linear combination of its input exceeds some threshold value okay so that is a, a, a mathematical way of actually representing uh, what, uh, the working of a neuron okay so we are assuming that a linear combination of inputs are actually coming to uh, a neuron okay and uh, whenever that uh, taught the, the input the combinations of input actually exceeds a particular threshold value whether it's a hard threshold or soft threshold then your your neuron will uh, maybe fire that means uh, neuron will generate an output okay and that output will be going to as the input of the other neurons so you can keep that uh, these are the output uh, okay so there will be other neurons somewhere here somewhere here somewhere here so all these neurons are actually getting input from uh, the output of or the the, the value that is fired from this particular neuron. okay Fine. and uh, in in another way you can see that uh, in single node okay this neuron actually implements a linear classifier because we know that uh, just we have seen linear discriminant function g of x where g of x greater than zero okay then w1 and g of x less than zero w2 so similarly whenever the output of or the, the, the total input actually greater than a particular threshold it fires otherwise it does not fire so that means it's a implements a linear classifier that's a very, a very important point so what is a neural network it's a collection of units fine okay and uh, uh, but uh, this uh, neural network is actually determined by its topology topology means uh, the maybe the structure of the graph okay which actually represents a connection of one neuron with the other neurons and the properties of neurons now we'll go to the structure of a single neuron so you can keep in mind uh, please in mind that uh, this uh, is simply a linear combination of uh, what uh, the weight vector weight values that we have discussed this so far okay but only thing a different uh, terminology used uh, instead of w0 w1 w2 it is w0 j assume that the j is actually we are uh, what uh, representing this particular neuron is represented by a letter j okay so that means uh, w1j w2j w3j something like that that means you can say that uh, uh, these inputs are actually coming okay that is this input uh, this input uh, this input they are actually coming from other neurons similar to these neurons okay so that means uh, their output multiplied by a weight vector so that means something like a w transpose x in our uh, what a uh, uh, linear discrimination you have a weight vector into x vector vector x vector will be maybe the output coming from the previous uh, what neurons or it can be some direct input also okay and we have seen that a w0 that's a bias and we have an x0 okay we x0 we always keep it as say one similarly uh, for each of this uh, uh, node we are the, we put a bias weight okay and we put as a bias which is a0 okay so a0 means uh, a0 is always one something like x0 and there is a weight corresponding to w0j 0j represents from the 0th uh, previous neuron to uh, jth uh, neuron so jth neuron is our current neuron so now we know that uh, what is the total input coming here which is actually the weight weight value uh, weight multiplied by the uh, 
the output coming from the previous neuron. Similar to our uh, linear discriminant function. So it's a total uh, summation, it's an input function. And uh, so that means uh, then assume that the output that is going to, okay, going from this particular neuron uh, to uh, other neurons is AJ. Okay, that's an AJ. So what is AJ? So AJ can be calculated from uh, the in total input sigma. And uh, uh, now comes a very, very, very interesting, very uh, important point. Uh, each of these neurons is assumed to behave in a nonlinear fashion. Okay, because human brain actually um, uh, does not process the uh, data linearly always because uh, if because the, uh, the, the how the brain works uh, and uh, how a mathematical model uh, the, maybe the neuroscientist actually knows that uh, brain actually takes a lot of uh, non-linear decisions non-linear way to behave so, so mathematical model should bring in some non-linearity so in order to bring in some non-linearity, we apply a function called an activation function on the total uh, input function. Okay, so that is input of j is actually the total input, and we apply an activation function g, okay, to the function, and that will bring in some non-linearity, okay, into the total output aj. So that means AJ. So now this aj will be multiplied with uh, this weight vector, and uh, maybe that will be going to this particular uh, neuron. So like that. So this is actually the uh, maybe very important uh, thing about uh, this particular neuron. Now we'll quickly go through. <clears throat> so now we'll see you can have uh, one neuron and you can have uh, ten neurons uh, connected. Okay, a lot of neurons connected. Okay. So this is a very uh, whatever things that we have discussed. Uh, but uh, so this is a point that we finally uh, input the total input is the, the previous output coming from the previous neurons multiplied by the weight values okay so that's the thing and now uh, uh, then we have seen the activation function g that as also we have discussed okay and now there are so the, which are the activation functions the non-linear functions that you can actually apply that's a question sir. there are many standard uh, activation functions sir. okay so here the uh, ultimate aim is actually to bring in some non-linearity into your decision boundary because we know that uh, whenever you are having a non-linear points okay that means uh, the points that are mixed up in two categories uh, you need some non-linear decision boundaries you, the straight line will not always solve the issue okay so in such case we have to have a non-linear decision boundaries okay for that we need activation functions of non-linear in nature so one very very first time used the non-linear uh, what uh, uh, activation function was actually called a threshold function that means um, uh, and from less than zero because suppose x less than zero you'll have output as uh, say zero and for uh, x greater than zero you'll have output as one but uh, the transition from here to here and so from zero to one uh, takes place at uh, this particular uh, point is a zero so but the, the zero the point is actually undefined the, the function is actually and the activation function is actually undefined so that can create uh, some issues so in order to avoid that that's kind of hard threshold but then came uh, uh, another very very popular uh, the discriminant function called sigmoid okay uh, function which is a sigmoid or say sometimes called logistic function okay which is of uh, maybe of this particular shape you can see that okay here you don't have a such issue because uh, when it is zero you have clearly there is a value Okay, you can easily take it but there are still issues when it comes towards uh, this region okay there's a problem and when it comes to this region there can be some uh, again issues but still this is one of the well accepted and the well applied okay uh, say logic uh, activation function which we which works, uh, works for many of the cases which is sufficient for many of the cases so both of these are non-linear activation functions which ensures that uh, important property that the entire network of units can represent a non-linear function that's the idea and that's why we are bringing in these activation functions then now there are different two way two uh, what, uh, uh, types of uh, maybe uh, ways in which you can easily connect uh, this uh, one neuron with the other neurons a collection of neurons so one is called a feed forward network Okay, we have feed forward network and another one is called a recurrent network. Okay, another one is called a recurrent network. So in feed forward, okay, it's a direct and cyclic graph. That means uh, your direction, your connection is always in maybe from left to right only. 
okay always from here to here again here to here again here to here so all the all so you will not have a connection in this particular direction okay, so that is a feed forward network but in recurrent network you will have uh, this particular type of connection that means uh, you will take a uh, at, uh, oh, at output of uh, one neuron and back to input of the maybe the same neuron or maybe to uh, some other previous neurons like this so that is called a, a recurrent neural network so i think you uh, uh, at least some of you have heard, uh, have read uh, about uh, uh, deep neural networks uh, okay uh, something like a convolution neural networks uh, recurrent neural networks rna so this rna is actually an example for say this recurrent network but uh, so here the, when you consider feed forward network it has got limitations okay because uh, here the output is actually um, determined by the present input okay so that means uh, every node actually receives a connections so uh, it represents a uh, feed forward network actually represents a function of its current input only it has no internal memory or internal state it does not actually takes what was the previous state but when you consider when you take output from when you have a connection from output to previous neurons something like uh, in this way hmm, you are taking the present uh, output also as the next input so that means you bring in some uh, uh, from form of memory there okay? because we know that uh, our brain actually works uh, using the principles of uh, memory we are having memory short term memory long term memory okay so how to represent that memory in mathematically is actually the recurrent uh, but we are not going to the details uh. we'll skip that one okay uh, so that's a case uh, and now uh, now the question uh, uh, how many uh, what uh, way how many the, the way in which you can actually connect to these particular networks uh, no neurons to form a neural network so usually uh, we call uh, layer by layer okay we connect a neurons layer by layer so for example this is a very simple uh, what uh, uh, neural network we call it as a perceptron network where one and two okay these two are actually the input net input uh, what uh, nodes and or input neurons and these two are the uh, what uh, output neurons okay three and four are the output neurons fine uh, so that means your input is actually given okay at this particular neuron or node and this node and by the same input we know that you have an x x uh, what a vector so you will have a component a x1 from and x2 these two are the inputs that you are actually giving here okay and uh, you will have an output uh, coming from this particular output uh, and you will have coming from this particular output okay. and uh, uh, the the edge labels arc are arcs are actually labeled using the weight values okay that means we have uh, the equation uh, w okay transpose x okay, number transpose x x is from here and uh, w is actually uh, from each of these uh, networks so that is an uh, idea okay now we'll have a g of x okay there will be g of x for this particular node and for this particular node and based on the output uh, the threshold you will say this this output corresponds to one value and this output corresponds to something so that's an idea so it's a single layer feed forward known natural kind of perceptron okay then so this particular data set is assume that you have a data set is something like this one okay it's a qubit adder network okay uh, our input as x1 and x2 and uh, the inputs are 0 1 uh, 0 0 1 0 and 1 1 so assume that uh, when you add there are two uh, things uh, one is called uh, a carry and uh, that's a sum sum and carry okay so assume that uh, this y4 this is y4 okay and this is y3 okay this is y3 so you will get a carry output from here and the sum output from here okay so then uh, can this particular network represents uh, uh, easily represent a carry as well as sub so that's a point so if you consider uh, this particular uh, what uh, some points okay this sum <coughs> you can see that uh, there are two ones and there are two zeros uh, so these two ones are actually coming when uh, 0 1 and 1 0 comes as input okay and uh, this is actually uh, this one comes uh, when both the inputs are actually one so that means uh, there is a logic function called and function a and g and so that is actually this particular function okay, that is when both the inputs are one you will have an output of one 
okay but in all other cases you'll have zero as the output so so this is a called an and function okay and uh, this function okay and this function this is actually uh, when one the when the inputs are different then you are you are having the output as well okay so it means zero or one or one and so so this function is actually called an xor function okay this is called an xor function so now if you represent say for example 1 and 0 using the uh, filled circles and the uh, empty circles so then this is an and function okay a and d and this is our function so the line is actually the um, our decision boundary maybe on one side you will have zeros and another side you will have ones so this is one and uh, these are uh, zeros okay and uh, this is our function that means uh, it will be one when any of the input is is one. So you can have a three ones and uh, you have a one zero here. And this is actually uh, two zeros and two ones and this is X or function. Okay. So here the point is uh, these two the uh, and and or okay and and or can e can be easily uh, separated using a, a straight line, isn't it? So which which you can easily obtain from the previous diagram but uh, here the you cannot draw a straight line because if you draw a straight line here you cannot say uh, one 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 side uh, dark and another sorry filled circle and another side uh, it's impossible and similarly you cannot draw it like this one you cannot draw like this impossible to draw uh, a straight line that means it is an example for a uh, uh, non-linear case it's not a linearly separable nobody can draw a single straight line but if you can have two straight lines, sometimes it may be useful because isn't it? Because suppose if you draw one straight line, sorry, uh, one straight line here and another straight line here, okay. So and you can say that uh, below this particular region you have a uh, below this region, okay, you have one type of data, and above this region you have uh, that same data, and then below this and above this you have a uh, uh, say. Uh, dark points so in that way you need uh, maybe say two lines uh, in that case it is possible okay so that is a uh, one problem with the simple person problem. so what is the problem is you, you come you bring in multi-layer feed forward uh, neural networks okay so here you have a okay here comes x1 and x2 fine okay and now we bring in one more additional layer okay in between the uh, output node uh, nodes and the input node so here we call it is a hidden okay it is called a hidden okay this is a hidden layer okay fine and uh, now you will have more weights okay because the the, the arcs that connects the hidden layer to the output layer and then those connecting hidden layer to the input layer but uh, but uh, the working principle is almost the same because here also uh, you apply you take the in, uh, output coming from this particular first node and multiply with the weight vector okay take the total summation here and apply the activation function here and uh, then you will get the output you uh, multiply that output with uh, this particular uh, weight similarly find the output here multiply with the weight here and they take the total summation here and they apply activation function here and take the final output there you can check maybe which is a uh, greater than uh, which is a threshold based on which you can put an output okay similarly the same thing can be repeated here also. so that is actually this particular uh, slide so the output at a particular node fifth node you can easily represent in terms of uh, the weight values as well as the uh, two input values x1 and x2 okay so to x1 and x2 so that is actually this particular equation represents. so you can just go and uh, see because whatever you apply activation function on the total input that is the only uh, thing that this particular uh, expression actually represents okay then now uh, uh, we we have to uh, have the uh, the, the error calculated at the output node okay uh, and uh, okay we'll skip this particular few slides okay <clears throat> then how we can actually learn in a multi-layer uh, artificial neural network is actually uh, assume that you are having the first training data okay first training data that means uh, the you have a training set in. so take the first row from the uh, table okay you have uh, the n dimension values if it's a five dimensional data you have five attribute values okay so their forms x1 x2 x3 etc to x5 
and assume that you are having a say one output node or two output node or say it can be five output nodes if you are having a five class classification okay whatever it is sir but uh, uh, ultimately how the learning uh, happens is that uh, we have to find out the total error at the uh, our, uh, all the output nodes what is the total error okay that we have already defined and with the linear discriminant function okay so what is the total error at the uh, out, uh, at output nodes all the output nodes taken together okay and use that error value to update the weight values because uh, for the when you take the second uh, training sample and uh, uh, feed forward that values through the uh, network uh, you have to change uh, the weight values uh, in order to make uh, the total error for this training sample and the output the minimum okay then you take the third sample from the training set uh, and again you will may have to update the weight Okay, using our previous equation, gradient descent, uh, that is del equation and all those things. So, so, so same thing is actually done here. So this is actually maybe the total error. Okay. So here dou by dou w is nothing but uh, the, the 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 del that we have uh, operator that we have uh, seen in the gradient descent function. Okay. So the, the total loss is something like uh, j function that we have defined j of w something like you know, okay so just uh, another representation i have taken this from another textbook andrew and g's uh, artificial okay intelligence textbook so the total loss okay total loss what is the total loss uh, and uh, you have to uh, partial derivative with respect to w vector it's keep in mind that it is w vector that means w vector can have a n dimension because you have to update each component of the uh, w okay vector and so domain w y minus hw so here y is actually the actual output and i suppose hw of x is the predicted that is this is our g of x or again sorry in the previous case we have is set k cap okay it's a predicted and this is a is set k okay just another terminology set k minus set k cap the whole square okay so that is the case here just another terminal so it's a total error and we have to take a partial derivative okay 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 what is k is actually the total number of output nodes okay so that is the case now uh, we have to calculate the error at the uh, output node and uh, the total error and then we have to use that error for updating the uh, weight vector okay so if you can if you come to the previous uh, uh, diagram assume that uh, input nodes uh, we call it as i okay and uh, this uh, here middle okay or hidden layer we call it as a hidden layer uh, j and uh, the output nodes we term it as k so i j k okay so i j k so w j k represents w j k represents okay w j comma a represents the weight values connecting hidden nodes to output nodes w i j represents okay uh, the the weight values that connects the input nodes to hidden nodes so that's a uh, terminology so we can actually update it okay w j k okay that means each connecting uh, hidden nodes to output nodes is previous hidden uh, previous current weight values plus eta of k into p of k that is a, a equation here alpha into uh, alpha is a learning parameter then aj is actually the output of the uh, jth uh, what, uh, uh, node okay and delta k delta k is actually the gradient function that we have defined that means what is the error right now that is is at k minus at uh, dash uh, into gradient of the total uh, input uh, at that particular output node. Okay. So this is the total error at the particular node uh, for, for a particular for a kth component. This is a delta of k. Okay, and delta of k into the uh, previous output. Okay, into alpha. So this is the equation. It is similar to the linear discriminant function uh, error update function that we have discussed. So that, that is a way. And similarly, uh, you can have an equation. Uh, but uh, w of ij that means uh, w of ij is actually those connecting from input uh, input node to a uh, hidden node so uh, it is easy that uh, we know what is out exactly output and the uh, uh, output node because uh, for a training sample we know what is a true level okay and uh, if there is a prediction in error then you can find out the difference and uh, the, the difference is non uh, zero you can say it's a correct prediction otherwise this is a wrong prediction but uh, yeah, but for the uh, 
hidden nodes that means if what is the output of third uh, node and what is the output of this fourth node that is very deep. nobody knows for a particular input because you know the output uh, we are expecting here and here it is exactly not because it's a training set data you look at the level whether it is a class one or a class two you know but here that information is actually not but the, the idea is actually uh, this is a node three and node four contributes okay their own contribution to the error at the fifth node as well as with the sixth node because they are connected to these nodes so that means uh, what is the error contribution of node 3 to total error what is the error contribution of node 4 to the total error so in that way that idea is actually used to update the, uh, the this particular uh, weight value so that means wij is previous wij plus alpha into a into delta j Okay. so the delta j is actually defined like this so where delta j is actually error at the jth node jth node we know that's a hidden layer so that is actually calculated using delta k that means which are the output nodes to which this jth node is actually connected okay so what's that that error is backtracked that is the error at the k node is actually brought back track so that's why it is called a back propagation the error is back propagated okay in order to find out the weight update so that is actually the uh, very uh, crucial uh, part in the uh, uh, ann okay so i think sir uh, we will close uh, stop here and uh, in 10 minutes we'll start is it okay sir Uh, yeah, yes, sir. We, uh, if, you, if you want, we can take a break and then we will, after 10 minutes, we'll have, we'll continue. Okay, yes, sir. Maybe, yeah. uh, five, five, uh, is that what time? 3.10? Yeah, 3.10, sir. Okay, okay. Thank okay. you. Okay, so, so we will have a short break for 10 minutes and then we'll continue, we'll start the session back at 3.10. Okay, fine, fine. Okay, thank okay. you. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you.
Thank <laughs> you. 